Hey, hello, everybody. Jeff Reinbold here. This is The Jeff Reinbold Show. I'm joined by Michael McQuaid. And today, in our look forward to all the divisional races, we're going to focus on a division that doesn't get much respect right now. But I think it's going to be a great race in the NFC South. Michael, welcome to the show. Jeff, how is the form? Now, look, I don't even know when it's going on. I know this podcast going out in July. We're recording this in the middle of July right now. Um, the, the NFC South is an interesting division, and that is all I'm going to say. And I'm going to, I'm going to leave it there and, and hand it back over to you. Yeah, you know, I, I, but see, here's the thing. Like, and this is the thing: you really don't love football, right? Because if you loved football, like I mean, really loved football, Mike, you, you would say this is the greatest division going. Do you know why? Because you can't call it. Yeah, think of all the storylines, my man. Think I, 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 I like I, I like the way you can't call it, but I, I feel like you know one of these teams is going to be a playoff team. At least one of these teams is going to be a playoff team, and you would look at just where the AFC is and you would look at where the NFC is and you would start to have a conversation. I, I love football and I, I get exactly, I, I completely I, I, appreciate what you're saying, but it's, it's, it's so hard to call. And look, it's like, do you want to jump in with the box first or, 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 or yeah, let's, 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 first? all right, let's, let's talk about the division. I think first, right? Mm -hmm. This has been a division for the last two years of the box. It's been their division. You know, prior to that, it was New Orleans. Prior to that, it was Carolina and New Orleans. Atlanta's had its time. This is a division that fascinates me right now because we have had a changing of the guard at the at the league's most important position, quarterback. You look at these teams, every one of these teams. We had Drew Brees in New Orleans. He was a, he was one of the top quarterbacks in the National Football League. You had, uh, you know, you go to Tampa Bay and you had Tom Brady. You go to Atlanta and you had Matt Ryan. You go to Carolina and, you know, you had an MVP quarterback and a Super Bowl team not very long ago. And so when you look at this division, now it's a division of, well, the top free agent is now in New Orleans and that's Derek Carr. And who would have, who would have thought even as little as five years ago, four, three years ago, that Derek Carr would ever be anything but a lifetime Raider, right? Mm -hmm. And he expressed openly that he wanted to be. But that didn't work out that way, and now he's got a new start in New Orleans with a good football team. You've got a guy who's struggling, former first round, number one pick in the draft, Baker Mayfield, trying to resurrect his career in Tampa with a team that, has won two straight division championships. And even though you can say, well, they've lost this, they've lost that, they still have weapons on offense and they still have a, as good a defense as there is in the division. I think you go to Carolina and you got the number one pick in the draft who they've anointed already in July as Bryce Young as the starting quarterback. And Frank right there, and they went out and did a great job, not a good job, a great job in the offseason of giving that kid weapons, right? Guys, experienced NFL guys that, you know, he can lean on as he learns how to play the game as a, as a rookie in the NFL. And then you got Coach Smith down in Atlanta who's going old school on us, and now his offense looks more and more like those Titan offenses that, you know, won divisional championships when he was the offensive coordinator with Tennessee. And he's got a number of high round draft picks in the last two or three years and rebuilt a defense with free agency. So I think it's fascinating. So let's take a look at all of these teams in a little more detail. And I think the best way to do it, Mike, and, and again, feel free to chime in, but let's start with the kingpin. Let's start with the, the number one team to give them their props, right? And that's it, Sam. That's the Tampa Bay Buck. I was going to say, Sam's are not going to win it. I'm joking. It's um, it, it's funny, though, because you look at a team like the Bucks and you look at, you know, where they've been and where they now are. And suddenly, Jeff, these, you know, these tickets that uh, were going for hundreds of dollars in Florida to, to go see Tampa Bay with Tom Brady there suddenly probably aren't as... Uh, shall we say, valuable. 
I guess the first question I'd ask you, Jeff, is what what week will Kyle Trask be starting the order back? But uh, don't go there. Now, don't go there. I, I here's the deal. I think for the entire division, right? Mm. This is like there's a movie called The Wizard of Oz, which I'm sure everybody knows, right? And yeah. there's a scene, there's a scene in the movie where the Wicked Witch is dead, right? And there's a the, the Lilliputians have this big celebration. Ding dong, the witch is dead. The wicked old witch is dead, right? And it's a, and this mad celebration. I think that's everybody in the in the NFC South because Tom Brady is no longer there. And even the Tom Brady that we saw last last year that averaged less yards completion than than six point four, which is only I think only the second time in his career has been that low. Even that Tom Brady cast such a big big shadow on the rest of the rest of the division. Now everybody has, has a little breath of air and a little chance to breathe. And nobody has a better chance to breathe than Baker Mayfield because here's a kid who has shown flashes. There he is. I can, I can take tape out there and you, you would say, this is, a, this is a high level quarterback. And then I can also find you tape. You'd say, what's this guy doing playing? Right. He's a, he's a right now a 50, 50, proposition when it comes to touchdowns and interception and that that ain't good enough you know and he he's had 26 think about this one michael 26 turnovers in his last 24 starts in the national football that's, that's atrocious well that's that, atrocious if it's if that continues right the bucks aren't going to win the division and kyle trask will be playing quarterback like you say but i think that Todd Bowles and the coaching staff will do some things to help mitigate those things. Remember, he's still got two Pro Bowl receivers outside, right? He's got Mike Evans and he's got Chris Godwin, and those guys are legit, right? Those are legit players. He's still got Tristan Wirfs inside. He's still got – the question is, how are they going to develop a run game? What's going to happen with their run game? Because they had the NFL's worst rushing offense last year. Average is about 75 yards a game. So they've got to find a way to run the football. And, you know, again, this is, I think, one of the things that happens at times when you have a great, great player. You become so reliant on that great player that the rest of the, you lose balance in your offense. And now I think this is a chance for them to get balance back. Defensively, think about it. Vita Vea, right? Devin White. Shock. Right? Yeah, you're talking about you know, Jamel Dean, Carlton Davis, Antoine Wayfield, those guys are all back. Anan Kalaich Kansi, who I'm excited to see. The young kid out of Pitt, who, when you turn on the tape, his college tape, he's a, I won't say clone of Aaron Donald, but he has Donald esque qualities. He can be a disruptive, disruptive force as a short defensive lineman. So, again, this is a team that pressures the quarterback extremely well. Bowles likes to blitz. They're going to have to win some games on defense, um, you know. But we'll, we'll see. I, I mean, you know, what are we going to get, you know, out of that defense week in and week out? They've got to be able to to play with consistency week in and week out and help the offense play complimentary football. It's going to be a different style of game, I think, for the Bucs than you saw certainly with Brady. I, I think you've got some sort of, I mean, you've mentioned the players there, but you've got some sort of continuity there. It's it's a weird one because from the minute Tom Brady came in, Tom, we, we knew that there would be, like, 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 like any player in the league, there will be an ending point. But we knew that that ending point for him will be expedited due to his age, his profile. And I think many people, including, including myself, I did not think Brady could go into a different team and win first year. And, he, and I know it was a different year with COVID, but he done it all. But he kept that team performing to at least some sort of level, especially the year after that game against the Rams sticks out in the playoffs. But, you know, last year, the team started 2-0 and and did not have a win of more than six points the rest of the season. There were so many close games where it could have been either way. And, you know, that... Obviously, a wild card game against the Cowboys sticks out, but this is a Bucks team that is. I'm not saying that me or you are Doctor House here, you know, but technically, as Grey's Anatomy, where 
They've got 75 million in dead cap space. They have issues there. You bring in Baker at a cut price $4 million deal over a year. And it's almost like it's bleeding out because Brady's gone and you fill over a plaster and you hope that plaster sticks in so you can at least give it to that dead cap space and move on. But you've said it yourself, you know, you've said a lot of those defensive names, Hedge Maldine, Winfield Jr. But when you've got Mike Evans and Chris Godwin there, they're productive. I mean, Mike Evans on his day is one of the best in the league at his position. But if you can get a serviceable quarterback with, you know, guys like Kia Dotton, tight end where Brady did try and emulate a lot of his play to him last year, the problem that you're going to look at is, and r- rightly you said it there, is protecting Baker or if it's going to be Kyle Trask and then secondly that run game. That's their issue. I think for me, there's too much going on there. I think it's, I think there's so much that's happened now where, you know, you lose Tom Brady and I think that there will be a hangover this year. I just don't see with the other teams in the division, and we'll talk about it now, but just for the other teams, I don't see how they can continue to perform to that level, if that makes sense. Well, I I, I agree. I think there's obviously going to be a tremendous leadership void in Tampa when, with the loss of Brady. Now, Todd's balls has reworked his coaching staff. So, again, I, I think the Bucks will be in it all the way to the end. I think the team that we're going to talk about next has – probably the best chance and i'll say why because it all starts at quarterback and Mm. going out and getting the top free agent quarterback in Derek carr was a you know a strike stroke of genius for the saints Uh, think it's a gamble jeff obviously there's a gamble it's always a gamble there's no guarantees right but if you go on the guy's history right Mm. you, you gotta say that this is a wise move think about this team they had one of the league's best scoring defenses last year, right? And I think when you look at how close they were so many times, all of the teams in this division were involved in a number of one-score games. But this is a team that more than any was right there at the cusp of winning. I watched them play against Baltimore, you know, and they couldn't close the game out. Uh, They fought their tail off, but they couldn't close the game out. Their defense played outstanding. Derek Carr is a specialist at fourth quarter and last drive comeback wins. He's had as many, I think, in in his nine years in the league, he's had as many as anybody in, uh, you know, 28 fourth quarter comebacks, 28 fourth quarter comebacks, 33 game-winning drives. Those, those are unbelievable numbers, right? I think that's the highest of any quarterback in the first nine years of his NFL career. And if he can recapture some of that, then I think the Saints jump right up. Is Michael Thomas going to be healthy? He's he's only played probably less than you know a quarter probably of the games in the last couple of years since he had that outstanding season. Injuries, foot injury, just had a you know foot surgery, toe surgery. He says he's going to be good as ever. Now he's thirty years old and he's at that point. That that's going to be a key one. Then the other one is. What's going to happen with Kamara, right? What is going to be his situation? Mm-hmm. What is the NFL going to rule in that battery charge, right? So that's kind of out there for the Saints. Now, if if Thomas is good and you pair him with Chris Olave, you're talking about a one-two punch now, right? Then you add if if they can get Kamara back, if he's not suspended for a game or if he's or whole season or whatever the NFL decides. Now you're talking about. You got three weapons. You got a tremendous weapon because Kamara is as good a pass catching running back as there is in the league. And you've got, you've still got good offensive linemen. And I think this team, there's some ifs there, but it's got an elite defense, elite scoring defense. And this is a team that if Carr can come in and just be Derek Carr, he doesn't have to be the savior, just be Derek Carr. Yeah. You know, just be that veteran quarterback that can make enough throws. He's going to, and if Thomas is healthy, you know, I think this is going to be a really, really good football team. They drafted a young wide receiver that I think has elite athletic skills. How fast he'll develop, we'll see. But I think in my mind, it's going to be a two horse race in this division. And it's going to be between the team we talked about previously, the Saints. I mean, shoot, the Bucks and the Saints. I think like, 
Well, firstly, for, for anyone that, for, just for anyone listening, in terms of the whole Kamara situation, no, me and Jeff do not have a DeLorean. We are recording this before any decision has been made. De- DeLorean made in Ireland, Jeff, you know that, yeah? Mm. Constructed, yeah. Nice car. Um, it's it's funny you say that about the Saints because it's for me it's it's not crash or burn territory, but you'd like to see. I think I think any fan of the league would like to see Derek Cargo and make an impact because the Saints have been. I wouldn't say they've been crying out for more consistent quarterback plays since Breeze is gone. Even in Breeze's last year, there was a real slowdown there. But you need to see Derek Carr go in, develop a relationship with the head coach Allen, and and make a playoff run. Not not a. It can't. It needs. They need to get to the divisional playoffs, and they need to to make a statement. And in in the NFC, they can certainly do that. When you've got a secondary of the Honey Badger, and when you've got Lattimore there, like that really gives them a different level in terms of what they can do on the field. And if they can get Kamara, like let's let let's be prudent and say that they've got Kamara after week six. Like let's just be like let's just say right now that Kamara is out for the first six weeks of the season. Well. They're going to have a game week one, but then they're on the road for four of their next five games. So if they lose Kamara, that could be a very, very poor start. That includes playing with Bryce, playing against Bryce Young with the Panthers. And they, but they have a game at home in week four against the Bucks, and who knows where the Bucks could be. So it could be a difficult start for them if Kamara isn't there, but it could give them the opportunity where, you know, it's cover over the cracks. Go two and three. Go three and two. Get the win against the Bucks. Get the win against the Panthers if they can. And if they struggle in different games because Kamara's not there, well, that's on Carr. And Carr's been there. He's done it. He now needs to prove to every Saints fan in the general league that, well, I've done, I've done it a bit in Vegas. I need to dig it to the next level over here. But he was done dirty in Vegas, yeah. And I, I, I know you're a Raiders fan. I don't like the way that, that ended. I don't think it was, I don't think it was professional, probably. Well, you know, again, that's a topic for another day. I think when we talk about the Saints, we talk about Kamara, and you're right. However, remember, Jamal Williams scored 17 touchdowns in Detroit last year, and he's bringing that ability to... Yes, sir. And Kendra Miller, right? Mark this name down. Kendra Miller, third-round draft choice out of TCU. He has a chance, I think, to be a really good back. Now, he's not... Alvin Kamara. I'm not saying that. But I think by committee, if Kamara is going to be gone for a few weeks. He gets the job done. Yeah, I think you I think you can do it by committee there. And and again, there's going to be you know, great competitors. Like and I and I put Derek Carr in that in that category. And I, I've I met that kid. I remember Michael, he was a sophomore in high school in Houston. And he, the family had moved to Houston when his brother was playing quarterback for the Texans. And I remember watching him in spring practice mm-hmm. when I went to spring recruiting at his high school. And as a sophomore, you could see already how gifted he was and what an intense competitor he was, right? I think for him, and we talked about the psychological aspect the other, you know, in the last podcast of playing that position. I think for him, he has to go in there and realize, I just have to do my job. I don't have to be the savior. I don't have to be Drew Brees because he's always going to be measured against Drew Brees, right? And that's not fair. This guy just needs to be Derek Carr and the good Derek Carr, right? The Derek Carr that's, you know, had more fourth quarter touch, touchdown drives and, and, you know, come from behind wins and all of that stuff that we talked about than any other quarterback in the, in the NFL in the first nine years of his career. So, again, this is a very, very good football team. You mentioned the defense. I think they're good at every level on the defense, and I think that the Saints, when they play at home, have a huge home field advantage, one of the biggest home field advantages in the National Football League. It's it's funny you said that because am I right in thinking the Saints aren't playing in Germany, are they? Am I losing my mind? They're not playing in Germany, are they? They're not playing in Germany. Ignore me. I thought they were for a minute, but the... The Falcons are playing in London, and they really, really intrigue me this year because to think where they were a year ago, Jeff, when they were in the Deshaun Watson hustlings and the disappointment that was there. They bring in Mariota. He's not there anymore. They've drafted well. You talked about a certain guy on a different podcast there. 
they are a really intriguing team. I, I'm not going to sit here and say that they are crash or they're, you know, incredible or crash and burn situation. I feel like it's going to be one of the upper genuinely this year. Well, I, and, and let's go to Atlanta. Let's transition to Atlanta because, you know, again, I, like I say, I think Coach Smith's done a great job of building this thing and, and give uh, owner, you know, Mr. Blank, the owner of the club, a lot of credit because he's given them the, the freedom and the backing to build it the way it needs to get built. Cause it was, it was really that stripped down when, when, you know, Arthur went in there, you know, you look at this and, and again, the question I always go to first is, is when somebody says, okay, my team is right. Okay. I don't, I want to know who your quarterback is. Right. Mm -hmm. And Desmond Ritter is a kid that, has a very, 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 very thin body of work so far as a quarterback. Now, he played four games at the end of the year. He, you know, he was sixty-three percent completion guy, two touchdowns, no interceptions. If he can just do that, this team will be competitive because they're gonna run the ball. B. John Robinson is a machine, and they've got he's a guy that can do so many things. But yet they've still got back who had a thousand yards last year. So they've got a thousand yard back right now. And you come back in with Bijan Robinson and then you mix in Kyle Pitts. And then, you know, you're talking about Drake London, their eighth pick in the, he was the eighth pick in the 2022 draft. He's a huge 6'4, 213 pound outside receiver. They are talented, they are long. They are gifted physically, and, you know, they go out in the offseason and get John O. Smith. Well, you know, what's that for? That's that's the tight end they need, at the you know, as an inline tight end. So I'm really, really excited to see what he's able to do with all of those tools on offense. Um, you know, uh, that that's – this team ran the ball 55% of the time last year, Michael. 55, that's old school numbers. Only the Bears ran the ball more percentage-wise. And, you know, you, you think about it. Just last year, right, 159 yards a game rushing, right? That is, that's what you're looking for. They're going to win games a different way. And what's happened as the NFL has evolved and everybody's gone to throwing it and spreading it out and all that stuff, now you come with a sledgehammer approach and that's hard to prepare for. That is hard to prepare for. So I think the Falcons are one of the teams I'm most excited to watch over the course of this season. Now, they go out, Coach Pease retires. They bring in Ryan Nielsen, who was an assistant with the Saints, and, you know, their assistant defensive coordinator. Sign Calais Campbell. Bring in David Anumata. An 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 Bud Dupree signs. You know, Kate Ellis comes. I mean, this is a this Jesse Bates from Cincinnati. They put some some serious defensive experience and talent, you know, on that side of the ball. And if that if they can get better, if they can get better, then they've got a great chance because it's not going to be all Tyler Algier and Bijan Robinson. It's going to be a diversified play action, get Ritter on the perimeter, bootlegs, that kind of offense. And if they can just play enough defense, this is a team that can beat anybody in the division on any given Sunday. I feel like you've really went through every position there. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you a couple of my thoughts, I guess, as well. You, first off, running back. You know, you mentioned the fact that they ran the ball so much last year. You know, you bring in Bijan Robinson there. But, you know, let, let's say that Patterson isn't traded away. You've got Tyler Algier, Cordell Patterson, Caleb Huntley, if needs be hit, but... But, you know, like if the bell cow is going to be Robinson, they've got a hell of a second and third running back there if you need it. And if they need to run the ball, if they have your confidence in Ritter, you run the ball. The big question marks for me is, are we going to see that next sort of step from Kyle Pitts? You know, like he had 10 games last year. He didn't have the best rookie season the year before that. What, one touchdown? The, the running joke for a long period of time was he's only scored one touchdown and it hasn't been on the United States soil. Now he's got past that. He needs to try and show what he's been worth, really. For me, you know, like, I want to see Desmond Ritter or whoever the quarterback is, if you're going to have Taylor Heineke there as well, hopefully in, in Falcons fans' case that Ritter establishes himself. But 
when you've a Drake London there, you've got a guy that if he connects with Ritter and that chemistry develops, then that has to be a situation where London develops well with Ritter and Pitts develops well. And the Falcons that have really been missing the wide out finally get a chance to develop. There's a lot of ifs there and there's a lot of ifs on the, on the defense as well. So it seems to be like if it comes together, Jeff, it could be really good in what is not as much a competitive conference in the NFC as what the AFC has. And time will tell. But at the minute, I'll say it'll finish second. Who, who have we forgot about? We were hit. The Carolina Panthers. Interesting. Do you realize that there were three teams in this division that were 7-10 and 10 last year? There was, there was the Bucks who won it, and then everybody else is 7-10. and 10. So I think that's what makes this division so fascinating. We're going to get to chance to see. There going to be a worst-to-first story here. And do not sleep on the Carolina Panthers, right? I, I, I just I, – I really, really think that – Really? This is a team, I really think this is a team that people are going to be surprised when they see them. I, I, you know, obviously we're going to talk about Bryce Young, the first player picked in the draft, and, you know, all he brings. But I'm just going to go through this list, Mike. This is what they did in the offseason. You talk about winning the offseason. This is what they brought in to surround that kid. Adam Thielen, DJ Char, Hayden Hurst, Miles Sanders, and then they, you know, have second round draft pick of Jonathan Mingo, a guy out of Ole Miss who is, you know, really, really special talent. Think of how much that means to a young quarterback when you go back there and you can get in the huddle and you've been with, you got Adam Thielen, DJ Char, and Hayden Hurst, three veteran proven NFL players, right? Not rookies that you got to rely on. These are guys that can help a young quarterback develop. I love Bryce Young. I thought he was the best quarterback in the draft. Uh, again, it'll be interesting to see what he's able to accomplish in his rookie season, but he's already got, been given the job. I think Frank Reich Rick recognizes that's the future, and he's going to do a great job of managing him. Frank Reich's a, a played quarterback in the National Football League at a very high level. He's been a great quarterback coach over the course of his career. He will mentor and, mo and he'll monitor that guy's progress. I, I think it's a great fit in Carolina. Then go over to defense, right? Bomb Bell comes in. That's an upgrade, instant upgrade. And, you know, they've got a bunch of young guys over there. Think about this guy. You never hear these guys because they're playing in a small market town, a team that's been bad, right? Ryan Burns has 30 sacks, 30 sacks. Again, in the last. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's, that's, one, it, that's one sack less than Aaron Donald in the last three seasons, right? And, and nobody even knows this kid's name. But I'm, that's what I'm saying. This is a team that, you know, you, you, you think about it. If they can stay healthy and they get a few breaks and they start to believe that this is a team that can catch fire. Now, do I think they'll win the division? No. But I do think they'll be much improved, and I think they'll be a fun team to watch as we go through this. That's, again, why I think this division, maybe more than any, everybody talks about the AFC East, and that'll be fascinating too. But I think the NFC South is one of the divisions that we are going to get some great storylines out of, some tremendous plays, and some head-scratching things too as we go through it, as everybody you know fights to to. What in what will be maybe the most balanced division in football? I think look at the secondary as well. When you got Jesse Horn, Dante Jackson there, and they've added Jeremy Chin. Sorry, they've added Von Bell, and they've got Jeremy Chin there as well. It, that gives them some sort of confidence when it comes to the secondary. Can can Horn stay healthy? If Horn stays healthy, he has mm -hmm. he has the skills to be an elite corner, but he can't stay healthy. He's got to stay on the field. It, you think about it, if Horn comes back and he can play a full season, and and continues to now you're talking about us that's a nasty bunch back there right so yeah i agree i agree that's a great point you, you almost forget that DJ, that dj chark went there like that's how mad this offseason has been for a few weeks and then it went completely dead after a while but you almost forget that he's there it's all on you know bryce young is he going to be given that opportunity to actually progress well in his first few weeks like don't be bringing in andy dalton if he doesn't do well let him actually experience the highs of those that's what you need to do you, you made a gamble and taking them first overall you've used those picks not just what you've had for poor performance but you've you've treated the way or you've got the farm for the Niners going after CMC they have to give them time there 
Uh, I like Hayden Hurst. I think if Young develops a chemistry with him, who knows what's going to happen. But I, I really do feel, though, that even when we've talked through these four teams, I think you, you've got the Saints, the Falcons, the Panthers, and the Bucks. And I, I would, I'm not going to sit here and probably say, you know, be gamble aware, etc. I would not put money on it, but I just feel like we'll be sitting at the end of December. We'll, we'll, just remember we're having a pint in Leeds and this will be the situation. Okay, we got some questions. Mark Jones from Dublin has got a came at me with one, and let's go. Uh, I, I think it's a great question. Are the New Orleans Saints the favorite to win the division, and will we see a renaissance, nice word by an Irish guy, a renaissance with Eric Carr in the Big Easy? I think that the Saints have to be the favorite right now. Very close. I don't. They're not a. They're not a hands down lock. Obviously, uh, we talked about the balance in the division. I do think, and I do hope that this is the renaissance, much like Drew Brees went to New Orleans with so many questions about his health and his career. He ended up having Hall of Fame career. Same thing. I, I would love to see happen for Derek Carr. I haven't got questions in front of me. What we will do is we'll have a different podcast, Ask Jeff, and we'll do questions. Um, thanks, for, thanks for our one forward questions. I, Jeff, I, I know people are really enjoying the divisional previews and divisional deep dives. So it's certain, certainly something that we're going to continue doing. We've got three more to go. Do you know which one we have to do now after this? Do you remember? No, you make it. You make it. <laughs> I think it's the AFCs. Okay. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. But we will, we'll, we will have a look. Who have you got? I would ask you who have you got next in the CFL, but I don't know when this is going out, so I'll show up. We we fly today to Edmonton and we play the Eskimo. At, ah, the Elks. They used to be the Eskimo. I got one more question here. I did. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. I had to answer the question. Sean Freeman. All right. And Sean screwed up. He didn't tell me where he's from. All right. So Sean from somewhere. All right. He said, Good morning, coach. Do you believe Derek Carr will have an impact on the Saints that the Saints hope for? And can Trevor Lawrence get a playoff place again? Yes, does that can be here? Yes, really enjoy the show and the podcast, Sean. We love bringing the show and the podcast to you. I do believe Derek Carr will have an impact. I do certainly believe that Trevor Lawrence and Jacksonville will not surprise anybody this year, but they will be back in the NFL playoffs. That I think Trevor Lawrence. I got to. I got to. I got to catch a plane. We're heading to Edmonton. It's been great visiting with you, and we are out of here. So, aloha. Aloha. And I'll very quickly say, I think Trevor Lawrence will be in the AFC Championship game. Aloha. Speak to you soon, Jeff. Yeah.